how fast are you walking to that bush? It's like, uh, it's just not my tempo. <laughs> no, rushing, you gotta waltz casually into the bush, please. Okay, so the expected set ban, they won't have to take out Callista this time. They did ban Ari in the last one, cutting into Mickey's champion pool and getting him on that Lulu where he couldn't hard carry the game on an assassin. I think a wise strategy for Incredible Miracle. Anarchy, Azir Nar LeBlanc last game. Taking a long time thinking about this one, and Azir will be the ban one more time. Yeah, probably going to see similar bans from Anarchy, I'd imagine. I think I am will actually ban the LeBlanc this game, unless they want to first pick it. And they'll go ahead and first pick a, a Gragas if they can get it for Tucson. You know, and I wonder too if, if they're going to get an opportunity to uh, grab maybe a first pick Nar. Yeah. Definitely a possibility, especially since you know CB Max wants to play that Hecarim anyway. I think Anarchy will have to ban the Callista. I am thinking about this one. Do they ban the LeBlanc instead and risk Vicky getting the LeBlanc? A champion he's 0 and 2 with so far and hasn't had as much playmaking ability, but they are going to take out his Vladimir instead. Hmm, okay. Well, he has been very good on the Vlad. What's the last ban going to be for Anarchy? I feel like the Nar is a pretty big threat. But they do leave open any jungler for IM if they do ban that. And Kalista as well, too. We don't know if, if Roar is really a Kalista player, though, do we? We don't. We do know that he is a very good Urgot player, yeah. and that is why that champion was taken out. And with the Cassiopeia, very well could be that first pick Lulu. I mean, this is really digging into Mickey's champion pool right now. Well, yeah, if that LeBlanc does get taken. I think you take this I and just see too. what Mickey plays. Is he going to play the Lulu again? Well, you're not too worried about that. Yeah, Mickey got a solo kill onto Apple, or onto uh, Frozen, rather, in the last game, but Frozen still had that late game carry potential and showed up in those team fights. Yeah, I see you go for it. Lock in the LeBlanc. Le lock the LeBlanc. Oh, no. They might take the Callista instead, and they will. Okay. It um. is important to remember that this is a team that plays around its AD carry primarily. Roar coming into this match had an 88% kill contribution rate in their first two games. So I am as a team that likes to all group up and fight together and give those kills over to Roar. So putting him on a priority champion where he's going to be able to snowball this game out of the laning phase could be a priority, but that's definitely gonna be Mickey taking the LeBlanc in response, I should imagine. He doesn't want to get stuck again on that Lulu. If he takes Cassid in this early, he runs the risk of getting Jace played into him. Yeah. So Hecarim will be taken. But that is so risky considering that there we go. the Gnar is available and that is an Apple specialty. And Gnar is really good right now in that matchup versus Hecarim since the introduction of Black Cleaver. It was already good when you could build that frozen mallet. And now it's even better because you could basically just endlessly win split push contests against Hecarim. So Grog is falling pretty far down the draft actually. Yeah. What do you think about something like a Lux into the LeBlanc? Can catch him with the light binding? Be a little bit tough though. Or yeah. a uh, Velkaz. I love Velkaz, but nope. It's going to be Gragas and Thresh. Pretty strong team being put together by Long Zoo IM right now. Yeah, and especially the kill pressure from yeah. the Thresh Callista lane is absolutely huge. So you have to imagine Anarchy's going to try and get that lane swap, but if IM picks Gnar, they're going to have a significant advantage if standard lanes actually develop. We might see Song Yoon grab this Jinx again. All right, Sejuani for Lyra is certainly, certainly reasonable. Ah, but they may just leave that uh, pick till last, the ADC pick till last. Yeah, they are really trying to hide their hand with this one. Alistair taken just as a tanky option that can disengage. Well, we knew this. We knew this Gnar was going to come in. I mean, Apple's just so good on Gnar that it would be pretty foolish not to take it. I'm just shocked that CV Max feels like he can deal with this matchup. He'll have Ignite, but... Hey, if anyone can. 
the original Korean Hecarim. That's right. This guy's been doing it longer than nearly anyone. And would we actually see the Slux? I mean, it'd be quite the pick composition if he goes with this, but it's so fragile, too. Lux has the lowest base HP of any champion in the game, and it's incredibly risky to play into a LeBlanc or an Assassin because you just have no mobility, and that the Lulu is definitely the smarter way to go here. Build around the Callista. Yeah. And that's what it's going to be. All right, locked in. So the final pick coming in for Team Anarchy. Will it be that Jinx, or will it be something a bit tankier? Graves would certainly qualify for that. Trying to blow up the back line if they go for this LeBlanc Graves combo. Also, just trying to get in the face of Callista early and play a lane yeah. bully. That's right. I like it. I like the Graves pick up here. I don't actually know very much about the Callista Graves matchup. Well, I would imagine. I mean, you can. It's a lot like the a lot of the other matchups for Graves, where you can just brawl a little bit more in lane. Be okay with that. But they're going to go with the Sivir instead. Well, with Sivir, at least you can shield the spell shield the Rens coming out of Callista, so she has yeah. a harder time executing you. But it can True. be difficult to hit some of those skill shots, considering the bounciness that Callista has, just weaving back and forth in lane by using the Martial Cadence or passive. So interesting composition. Uh, relatively low damage from IM if Roar doesn't get rolling early. And again, Tucson has had some trouble applying early pressure and getting ganks down, and that's really what they need in this laning phase to get Roar in a place where he'll be able to hard carry this game. Now, it's also a composition where Roar can easily build Rune and Hurricane because there's going to be so much protection for him and crowd control that he'll be able to hit multiple people. Yeah. So I like the composition from IM as long as Callista gets big and Anarchy going for a lot of a single target damage to lock down the Callista with the Hecarim and with that LeBlanc. So. We're all gonna have to be careful, and Apple has to be very dominant in that lane to keep Hecarim down. Well, Anarchy's given themselves opportunities to make plays, and it seems like that's where they are at their most successful. So it all depends on Mickey, CV Max, to show what they've got against IM. A win here would be pretty big for Anarchy, but incredible miracle. They want that 2-0, they want those points, and we'll see if they can get them. It's time to move into game number two. Welcome once again to Summoner's Rift. Santa Gragas. What do you know? Tis this. No, it's not the season. What? It's almost Christmas in July, Doa. I guess so. We're getting close to June. It's true. So that means we're only a little over a month and a half away or so. Well, we're closer to the six month period for Christmas right now, though. Yeah, I suppose. That's a ward going down. We'll be taken out. Yeah, I'm giving it to Roar even. That valuable 10 gold, all right. Yeah, man. I can buy one seventh, a little less than one seventh of a ward. <laughs> okay, so Deep Ward goes in at the red buff right now. They know the invade is coming. Ward's being placed to check Anarchy's position in lane. They really want this duo lane. Now, Anarchy will recall as IM pops out in the lane to check the brush. So will they know that Anarchy is already up there at the Tier 1 turret? Doesn't appear that they've found this yet. Still kind of walking around, wandering, and wondering. Wondering and wandering. Oh, hi. <laughs> I'm not sure if Mickey should have let his presence be known there, considering that he saw the dual lane going into the bottom side. Hmm. Tucson will be spotted, and Anarchy is going to get standard lanes. This is not going to be very good for them. It's exactly what Incredible Miracle wanted in this situation. Sangi and Snowflower is trying to fast push this and at least get level two faster so they don't have to deal with the problem of losing out in an early trade with Roar and Ignar. Uh, that's gonna be pushed up and blocked right there. Yep. Play on the wave just to 
take this, so we're going to be all even in terms of experience, actually. Yeah, we'll see if maybe Roar and Ignar can get something a little bit quicker here. Waiting yeah, they for should be able two. to. Yeah. Yeah, and Ignar's just going to provide so much zoning as well, too. Level 2 slightly earlier, but pretty much, pretty much at the same time when things are all said and done. Not a lot. Well, Anarchy, I think, had a bit of trouble right now, especially because they picked a farming jungler. So it's all up to Tucson. There are so many plays he could make Yeah. Well, on these see, lanes. You can see Sangin already getting pretty poked out, too. It's not looking too good in the initial stages of this 2v2. Wow, Roar is doing a very good job of zoning. Yep, has those Sentinels already placed down as well, so yeah. feeling very comfortable about his position. In terms of vision, already has a ward in the river. Has this. Oh, body slam onto CV Max and a little bit of trouble. That's a lot of damage. CV Max with no flash. They're not going to chase him, though. Tucson actually ends up taking quite a bit of damage from the turret. But he already used his teleport to get it back into lane after taking a camp right at level one in the jungle. So taking that bit of a damage. Now, you'll notice that he went back. He did the, bu the build where you hold off on buying your item until you see where you're going to go. Mm -hmm. But this could be an early dive right here, CB Max. Uh, I think it's definitely an early dive. With that Meganar, it's going to be easy. And first blood going to Tucson. That successful dive, CV Max not looking too thrilled about that one. And it's going to be a decent amount of damage to the turret, too. Yeah, it was a great return from Tucson. Finally, we see him actually having a really big effect in the early game. Yeah. Uh, because that flask was used, but wasn't able to regenerate CV Max enough by the time that that gank came around again. That's right. And there was no response from Anarchy's jungler. They've got their hands full on the bottom side also. So Apple's starting to get a lead already. Apple doesn't even have to use teleport right here if he doesn't want to. Just walking right back up as the wave naturally pushes back towards him. So a lot of CS actually denied right there from CV Max about a little more than half a wave. And this Every is now a little bit helps. Oh, the flash needing to be used by Ignar. And a little bit out of position there. Yeah, Lyra in the river. Didn't want to be caught by a pincer maneuver, so smart to flash, but that's one less way that this bottom lane has to kill now. Yeah. So there is that. CS lead already building, though, for Roar. And AD Carry has been able to continue to just keep poking Sangyun. So I'm curious as to what Roar is going to max this game and if he's going to build the Hurricane first, because this is one of the few compositions that I would actually like to see with a Hurricane first when you have a lot of peel for the Kalista and a lot of buffing abilities, shields to make sure that she can stay close in the fray to hit multiple targets. And that way you can really use that execute. A lot of Korean Kalistas actually just max the Q first because they go Bloodthirster. Right. But this is one of the situations where an E max with Hurricane I think is justified and could be quite powerful for the mid game. Also in the last few patches we did see those Buffs a hurricane as well, so you get a little bit more damage, 10 more damage from it. Right. Ward here in the river, going to spot twos and two pink wards. Man, they really want to camp CV Max. And this is smart, because he's the main way that their Kalista's going to die. So if he's underpowered, there's not any way to take out their main source of damage. CV Max pushing up a, a little ways here in the top lane too. Tucson waiting under turret. Looks like they may just want to dive him again. Apple has Meganar though. Oh, Tucson finds Lyra or vice versa here. They were getting some damage done early on. Here comes Meganar. Apple's still there and that'll no. let them kind of zone a bit. Yeah, there's no way. CV Apple just hit six. Was oh. in Meganar form. So here's a run from Mickey. Dodge, nice dodge. on the chains. Yeah. <laughs> It's in the brush. Lear's like, no. Well, they still don't have six on Hecarim, so they yeah. can't complete that. Now, Roar going to get attacked. Yeah, but Roar's going to go right in onto Songyun. Songyun in a lot of troubles. Rend enough, it is. Roar picks up the kills there. Snowflower trying desperately to make something happen, but Ignar is there to protect his AD carry. Oh, teleport coming in, though, for CV Max. Getting low already. Roar getting taken out. And so the teleport used to just get a kill in bot lane, but I feel like this is going to just deny CV Max, you know, more in top. Well, meanwhile, Mickey in a little has bit no of trouble. Mana. Yep, that's right. And Frozen has just enough to get that kill. And Frozen so. bumping him within turret range right there also. So Mickey trying to get a very aggressive all in, but not finding it. Yeah. So I feel like that went a lot better for IM overall.
Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely, because the advantage, too, is that Sung Yoon didn't even get an assist. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Kill goes over to Roar, so the lane advantage, pickaxe the Bloodthirster right now onto the Kalista, and Roar was just waiting right there to pop the Ren stacks until the Spell Shield went down, flashing for it in the end. But we did see an even number of summoners used in that bottom lane, except Ignar's flash is going to be up sooner. So, yeah, I mean, sure, CV Max answered with a kill of his own, and that'll help him out in topside, but now the all-in potential is huge from IM's bottom lane. Yeah, we'll see how much it actually does help him out, because I feel like he's losing a lot of XP and farm, too, just by teleporting down, by wandering around. Well, he's already behind in that farm but should all be about even with the assist compared to the kill and there we see the item differential as our observer is highlighting very problematic especially as uh roar and ignar are going to be six really soon yeah and also flash is going to be up very soon also so Callista, actually q and e both with two points at level five so pretty balanced build right here oh, okay Oh, uh, Lyra may be coming in for a lane gank. Coming down by the tier one, as we can see on the minimap at the moment. This is just farming the jungle, so it may end up being a 3v2 in favor of Anarchy if they can pull this off. There he is. They're expecting some sort of all in right here. Right. Oh, oh. they're baiting it really nicely. They're baiting it really well. Lyra is six. So if I am takes this bait, it's going to be pretty silly because they haven't seen the jungler in quite a long time. Yeah, well, that's a grab on Snowflower. That may be it. We'll see how much they want to go for it. They do the box use. Lyra being so patient. Here comes Gragas, so Roar in a lot of trouble, though. Going to get taken out before Tucson can even get there. Ignar flaying people away. Explosive cast. Tucson has to use it just to keep his support alive. And it looked like CD Max stopped the TP because I saw it flash on the lantern yeah. for just a split second. And CD Max may have used E to get him out of that before he could join the Fracas in the bottom lane. But Roar and Ignar committing to that, getting baited in. Sangyun and Snowflower actually selling that gank pretty well. Yeah, pretty much. Backing off, uh, intentionally taking that play into the box in order to set it up. And Grog is just not quite there when the action went down. So good turnaround. And that's going to help Anarchy out quite a lot. Only an assist, however. On to Song Yoon. Yeah, he still kind of ends up sort of getting the short end of the stick as far as participating in kills this game. Either way. Dragon nice. being taken right there because yeah. Roar will respawn and then immediately walk over during the recall of Anarchy's duo lane. So they're going to pick up this one for free. Yep, first Dragon of the game going to Longju I am. And Frozen doing very well in the mid lane. Mid and top still doing fine for I am. Wow, Songyun going for Brutalizer here, so looking for lane dominance now that. Yeah, I guess so. He started to get back in the game in terms of gold. That's going to delay his Infinity Edge by a substantial amount. Uh, can they continue to make plays down here? Because if it's worth delaying the Infinity Edge, because he's not the only damage threat on his team. They have the LeBlanc as well. So taking out Roar again early could delay the damage from Incredible Miracle to the point where they no longer really have any. Mm -hmm. And we'll see. I'd imagine Roar's got to be pretty close to his Bloodthirster at least by now. I'll see if he goes for it, if he's going to go straight into uh, Hurricane after the BF Sword. It could be. A couple different build paths you can go. You get that flat damage and then get the hurricane thereafter. And we've seen both. Apple already has that giant spell. Definitely going for that frozen mallet build to continue punishing CV Max. Yeah, There's just no way you close that gap at that point. Nar just kites you oh. forever. Mickey gets knocked around. Wow, wow. nice. Just completely wrapped up all the way through his passive. That was a smooth gank from IM. 
Yeah, Man. very nice, especially because the ward had just come over the wall, too. It's not like Mickey knew that was there. Yeah. Wow, that was very clean from Tucson. Now you can see Frozen has that. He's an entire chalice up right now. Tucson again looking for a gank in topside. No explosive cask for this one. Well, top is very low right now, so Apple, Apple may just be able to. very close to Meganar. Yeah, he might just be able to walk up and kill the turret, and then they'll kill CV Max. Apple, though, baiting CV Max out. Here comes Tucson. CV Max is in a lot of trouble. Pushes Tucson back, gets pushed back himself immediately. The ult used, but the ult from Meganar, enough to lock CV Max against that wall, and that is a kill for Apple. And they're going to get the turret as well. Yeah, the minion wave actually finishing that one off. And now some more action down in the bottom side. Anarchy yeah. wants to all in. Oh, Ignar brings Snowflare and gets saved by his AD carry, though. Yeah, Ignite's still used. Yeah. But Checking the brush like right Ignar there. Okay. Smart. They don't know where Lyra was. And good warning by IM. If you look at the jungle, there was no way that Lyra could have been there to help with that dive because they had the pink ward right behind the red buff and then the green ward in the tri brush. So there was no avenue unless Lyra was coming in form a lane gank, which they would have seen in the lane as well. So really, really safe dive and well set up by IM. Yep. So Roar on his own, down and bot for now. But at least not giving over any other kills. And it looks like Tucson's there to help out if he needs it. Should be fine though. Oh, meanwhile, another duel in the mid lane. Frozen taking a little bit of damage from Mickey, but he didn't quite hit the skill shots he wanted to, so that one will end quickly. Well, even if he had, the Athenes done for Frozen right now. He's got a good deal of magic resist. He has flash, he has wild growth. There's not a great opportunity for Mickey to 100 to 0 him. Frozen also has level 2 wild growth right now. And yeah. That is quite a lot of HP. Quite a lot of wards coming down between both teams as well. The mid lane again, just really the focus for these couple games. Well, the hope for Anarchy is that they have kept Roar down. And that is absolutely huge in a composition that's very dependent on him. But how are they going to be able to punish it? Because when Apple is at this advantage and he's going to be able to constantly win the split push, mm -hmm. there's not really a great way for Anarchy to come together on the map and then exploit the weakness of this composition in a 5v5. True. They can create picks on the Roar, uh, so they may just try and push down harder on the other side of the map and get some kills while Apple is off by himself. Oh, Ignar looking at the brush. Here we go. Lyra comes in, but Thresh is right there as well, too. Where's Callista? Still down in bot lane, so I am not wanting to fight. And it doesn't look like Anarchy wants to commit quite yet to that as well. No. Still a minute until Dragon. Both top laners with their TP up, but Apple with that significant pressure advantage continuing to push forward. No Trinity Force finished onto CV Max yet. Yeah, not so far. But they've been taking a lot of the jungle from Anarchy at the moment. Looks like they will they get the blue buff? I think they did. Grabbing Snowflower as well, too. Yeah, they did take the blue buff. I didn't see who it went on Lyra to. Lyra has it, but Lyra also just used his smite, ah, which okay. is going to be, looks like, barely up in time for this dragon. Lots of recalls. Oh, Frozen. There's a little bit of a shield. Mickey in trouble now, going back into the turret. And another kill. Nice hook from Ignar, yeah, wow. Picking that the was right target hook. again. Just really good synergy from Frozen on these mid lane ganks. Yeah. Uh, Tucson and Ignar working very well with their mid laner to secure these kills. And Mickey, again, getting camped in this game as the way to shut this Anarchy team down. It seems that way. Roar gets brought in. Nice dodge. Ignar. Yep. Dodge on the boomerang blade. And now the dragon is up. Uh, Lyra's still actually waiting on that smite. Looks like there's about eight seconds left, so that's a window if they're keeping track of it. Well, Tucson's trying to take it by himself here. And it Not looks like, like there's any can. chance to smite against the Callista anyway, Doa. Yep. What am I even talking about? Rand will generally do a lot more. Yeah. Oh, well, meanwhile, Apple may be in a little bit of trouble. Max uses his ultimate. Mickey over the wall, misses his chainsaw. I think Apple's still a goner. Yep, Mickey picks up a kill there. 
Not someone you really want to give kills to, but overall, but Miami's actually still the big lead. makes him worth gold again to kill, which is True. something that Frozen hasn't had any trouble with so far, and has his ignite up back. If he wants to get it again, Apple does go down, but he's going to probably let's see not maybe not quite enough money yet for that Frozen mallet. He seems to be getting fairly close. Oh, Mickey tries to make another play. Frozen's done a great job of dodging the chains from LeBlanc this game. Why does... Oh, Snowflower doesn't actually have his ult up. That's a visual bug. Oh, okay. I'm pretty sure. I was wondering about that. <laughs> so why is he ulting right now? <laughs> Just in case, you know. <laughs> better safe than sorry. You know, if Frozen gets poked enough, I think he could probably do some damage. But as is, Frozen doing a good job of playing within his limits in this matchup. Yep, that ult is always on. It's a toggle now. <laughs> wow, wouldn't that be nice? I know, right? Oh, there it goes. Oh, okay. Went away. He, he screamed enough that it went away. So the Frozen Mallet is completed, but CV Max has had a chance to catch back up in terms of CS. Yeah. So Anarchy sort of clawing their way back into this one in the laning phase. Oh, oh nice. Yoon, grabbed by that death sentence. Roar is right there, too. Snowflower taking a lot of damage. Roar may not be done TP. yet. Here comes Teleport from Apple from both top laners. Apple needs some saving here. Snowflower very low. Alt against the wall. They grab Lyra out of it as well, too. It's a 3v4, though. So bold for IM. Where's the rest of the team right now? They're waiting long enough. Here comes Frozen now. Can he get the wild growth off? Just in time, no, not quite. And Roar, meanwhile, still gets to take down Snowflower. A kill for Callista, but man, Mickey is cleaning up big time. Lyra coming in, distracting Roar. Will the Ren be enough? It looks like it will be. So a double kill for Roar before it's all said and done, and Mickey finds Tucson. That's an ace. Wow. Okay, well. well that was a poorly advised fight for I am. I am. Started that fight like you were saying, a man down. And then they teleported into a very risky situation where Roar and Ignar were not really able to help. Yeah. So when the dust settles, Mickey actually gets a couple more kills. Apple is down at 50% HP, only hits two people. Now they, they managed to hook Lyra, but Lyra still has his ultimate right here. Apple nearly dead and pretty much useless without that ultimate. Frozen chooses to come in and ult Apple, and then just kind of runs his way through the team fight. Mickey easily able to pick up some of these kills on the outside, but uh, there was such a disadvantage that I am started that team fight with, and now we're dead even in kills, and Anarchy actually has a gold lead. That was an absolutely ridiculous fight, man. It was, yeah, man down and with nobody else around. Yeah, no one else around, and there was not really great follow-up on no. that NAR ultimate, too. And again, it only hit two people. Now, they got the hook down onto Lyra, but it didn't ultimately matter. Hook down onto Mickey, and wow, Anarchy just having to run for their lives here. I am going right back into it, but they may live to regret it. Another inopportune team fight. Frozen Force to ult himself. Here's Roar now. They run the fight back into the AD carry. Pull out Ignar, and so it looks like they'll make it out. They initiated that team fight without knowing where the enemy jungler was. Yeah. So they took another man down team fight and they're probably gonna lose the mid turret for it. CV Max having a very difficult time holding in the top side. Mickey wants the kill. He's gonna get it. Wow. Yep. He certainly will. Oh, Tucson running into the red buff pit. And he's still alive. Not for long though, I would imagine. Tucson's still on the run. Wow. What is this? What an escape from Tucson, I can't believe he made it out of there. I am, oh, and the hook onto Song Yoon. This is still happening, apparently. Arrow, oh, Apple, rather, nearly kills him. I had KT flashbacks for a second there. Frozen gets a kill there. This is starting to look like a KT Arrows game. And wow. they're still chasing. Song Yoon's so low. But Dragon's coming up soon, too, as well. I am can just transition this into maybe an objective or two, but okay. So they will back off. What a crazy game, though. Yeah, uh, and in that scuffle, what happened with Tucson that you're seeing on your screen right now is that he used his smite with the Trailblazer to actually get yeah. HP back off of the red camp. <laughs> and because it was the red camp, he got more HP than he even would have gotten normally from the Trailblazer, which is why he got such a big chunk back. Yeah. So that could have only happened 
if he had gone over the red wall. So All part of the plan, and they get the mid lane turret because of it. <laughs> and now, that's the gold lead still going towards the Anarchy, but two turrets for uh, IM as well. They've tied that up anyway. That's funny. That's like one of those really specific situations. Yeah. <laughs> you don't see that every day. Oh, Anarchy invading into the jungle of IM. Tucson doing a bit of damage. Dragon up in 15 seconds, but nobody really making a move towards it yet. Yeah, not good ward coverage down by either team. Anarchy wants to make a pick in this top side. They're pinging the top turret right now, so they're not overly concerned with the dragon. Anarchy has a chance just to solo that dragon with Callista. I mean, they have a hurricane bloodthirster Callista. She can solo dragon right now if she wants to but they don't know if there are wards there as they push out this lane. Yeah. They're gonna try and just put pressure down onto the tier one. Well, they're gonna lose their tier one in top. I am losing that one. Polite applause from the audience. And there we go, now Roar going after that dragon. They get the grab onto Lyra though. I am just trying to distract while Roar takes the dragon. Pulling it out of the pit, though, I feel like you would have rather left it inside, you know? Well, yes, but Anarchy was making a move. They had to leave, basically, so yes. they're going to abandon that attempt. It was a nice try, but Anarchy already starting to set up. They have position in the river. Here comes Mickey for a little bulk damage. Yep, Apple there, close to Meganar. I am can certainly bully their way into this mid lane if they want to. Oh, recall actually for CV Max. He's got teleport, so he can come back. And he will do that. Teleport for CV Max, trying to come from behind here. Maybe over the wall. Nope, just the kind of running in a circle. <laughs> oh, man. He heard I liked rotation, so he I guess ran so. in a circle. <laughs> that was a Monte Cristo <laughs> tribute teleport right there, yeah. <laughs> I like fast rotations, you know. That was like one of the fastest I've ever seen. I'll give it to CV Max. Hmm. Well, so that happened. I got all ready to cast a team fight, and I just casted a horse man running in circles. Esports life. <laughs> CB Max still with a flank here. And is he going to come in? I am backing away, Tucson taking some damage. Well, I am playing this out right, just pulling back so that they couldn't get flanked right there. Apple does. Oh, oh they hooked Song Yun. What were you doing there? All right. He's not there anymore, so everything's okay. Apple nearly done with Meganar. Oh, Whoa, explosive cast, they catch Sangyun again. What in the world? And Nar actually gets a chance to throw out that ultimate. CV Max hitting very low, a big knockup by uh, Snowflower, but where's the follow-up? CV Max taking down, that's a double kill now for Roar. Roar getting very low, taken out by Mickey, and now it's Mickey's job to turn this one around. Gets a double kill, gets taken out by Apple, and Apple taken out now. Are we getting close to a double ace? Almost frozen, makes it out. So that looked like a very good engage. Tucson got the big ultimate uh, to burn down Sangyun, but Mickey was in the back line and Roar was hopping forward. <laughs> and as soon as Mickey yes, managed to take out Roar, there isn't any more damage. So watch this. So it starts out with Sangyun getting hooked right there, having to use his ultimate. So like, oh, good situation, they think. And there's a Gragas in the pit I better get right now. Again. So that's a great ultimate to set this one up. So Sangyun is going to get burned down while the rest of the team is actually tied up right there. But CV Max gets a good ult, and they just continue walking forward right here. Watch Roar's positioning Ugh. as he jumps into the middle of the team fight to get hit by a Sejuani ultimate and then burned down by LeBlanc. And then at that point, there's just no more damage for Incredible Miracle to burn, to kill the rest of these tanks. So Frozen has to run. Could have been a very easily won team fight for IM. But uh, yeah, if they just kited. Yeah, Roar had different thoughts. Houston going in. Oh, CV Max getting blown back again. Do you really want the Hecarim in your back lines? There's a big knockup from the Wild Growth. And now Roar is going to have to watch that positioning a little bit more. Poke on both sides. Uh, and nothing really coming out of that yet. Apple Meganar for the moment. Well, the bloodier this... Oh, Lyra gets grabbed. That's a lot of damage. Tucson comes over with the knockup, flashes back over the wall to escape. Getting ignited, I believe. No, not quite. Just taking some damage. Oh, Whoa. meanwhile. We bug <laughs> splat! <laughs> oh, no! 
Would you please describe the events just before this dialogue appeared, Monty? Would you like to tell us what was going on in that game? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, wow. there were uh, a lot of kills. Yeah, uh, people getting caught a lot. People got caught. There may have. <laughs> it had to happen eventually, you know. <laughs> we're going back into the game, guys. <laughs> it's just one of those nights, isn't it? <laughs> uh, oh, we got another one. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, well, okay. Did Anarchy versus I Am break the League of Legends? At first, it came for Monte Cristo's sanity, and now it's going for the client itself. <laughs> oh, boy. Looks like the players are paused. So hopefully we can get yeah. back into this one. Well, that was like the middle of a fight, too. <laughs> Middle-ish right. of a fight. It was it was a pick. Uh, Roar was, kind of a non was moving fight. forward into the river at the time. It's kind of a nonstop fight with uh, these teams, you know? A lot of action. All right, we're trying. We're loading back up. Okay. <laughs> the face on the cheerful for, uh, I don't, I'm not sure which one of, I'll be honest, I don't know which one of Anarchy players that is. But uh, he looks like kind of bemused, but horrified at the same time. He's like, Ugh. It's like when you click one of those scary links on the internet, it's like a prank, you're like, ah, ha, ha, but you're scared at the same time. Well, everyone's loaded in 90%. And that's where it's been for a little while now. Good times. Oh, we've... I don't know. Frozen doesn't know either. Yeah. Just chilling. Chilling in his chair. Waiting for the game to start again so they can clean up that fight if Roar can move far enough forward. You'd imagine we've got redundant observer clients, though. Well. Oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh, it's not looking good, guys. <laughs> What are we going to do, Monty, if we're deprived of Incredible Miracle versus Anarchy? I just don't know how I can go on. I don't know how I could either, Doa. Are we finally going to have our first, like, LCS moment where we have to be like, the games were finished off stream. We'll, know, we'll let you know. We can fill time forever, though. <laughs> we can. I can tell you how the rest of that game would go in, in case we didn't see it. It'd be very back and forth. <laughs> Leads being swapped multiple times, and eventually I am would get a team fight and win. I think that is probably an accurate description yep. of how this game would go. Well, looking at the PC, as we get to see now from our preview monitors, you don't get to see. You just get to enjoy Tucson. Just enjoy Tucson right now. But basically, the loading screen is like frozen permanently as a desktop background on this computer right now. <laughs> And we just checked the internet, so we know that you can hear us because the internet is working. That's true. That's true. So it's not a problem with the internet here. No. As we sit here gloriously it's never, at 90%. It's never a problem with the internet in here Korea. In beautiful <laughs> South Korea. It's true. We've got great internet. I need to call up my internet company because I've heard I can upgrade to 500 megabits down, or 500 gigabits down, rather for only like 10 bucks more a month. <laughs> <laughs> I love this country. <laughs> I have 100 down, 100 up already. I don't even, what are you gonna do with that much internet, Doa? I'm gonna have a really great stream. I don't, if I start streaming someday. <laughs> why not, man? Why wouldn't you pay 10 bucks more a month for like 400 more up and down? Because I don't know what I would do with it. I would find a way to, to use that. <laughs> Download all the games, you know? Every, I could have like my entire Steam library downloaded in like two seconds. Maybe with that connection, I could like have like 10 better ping to NA server from here or something. I don't know. I don't know if it works. It probably doesn't work it like doesn't that. It doesn't work like that. Can imagine? Maybe. Well. You'd also then have to play on the NA server. I, I do that sometimes though. I know. With uh, my, some of my old college friends. Do some social law playing. <laughs> on Skype, you know? <laughs> Is that what happens on the NA server, social lol playing? That's Are you much. trying to make a, a commentary here, Doa? No, but uh, <laughs> but I suppose you could. I suppose you could. So maybe it's time to talk about Fantasy LCS. Uh, my team's doing really well, Doa. Mine's I, not. 
Yeah, I know. You started out this week at negative points after day one. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I did. But that's only because I had diamond. It's only because I had diamond playing uh, out of Europe. I'm feeling really good about my NA guys, you know? I've got Bjergsen double lift, really solid. I feel like the matchups for gravity are very good. So I've got Hanser and Keen in there. And then who else do I have? Who's my jungler? No, wait, Diamond's my jungler. Who's my top laner? Who's my top laner? Oh, it's Hanser this week. That's it's right. It's Hanser. And my team is Impulse. So I feel like it's pretty good. I'm going to beat Barry badly. <laughs> Beautifully. <laughs> Beautifully beating Barry badly in fantasy. That's right. Right. I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. I have Reckless and Rainover. You've got a really good team. I, I, I drafted. In theory. I, I drafted really well, if I do say so myself. That's good. But we all know who the reigning champion of our fantasy league is. That's me. <laughs> I am the reigning <laughs> fantasy champion. It's true, you are. I am. That's Even right. though your stats and were actually horrible. Yeah, that's right. I won our fantasy league last season for the this spring so split with the most points scored against me as Out well. Any team. So I had like, I didn't just win the fantasy lead. I won it on like hard mode, man. I want it on like nightmare mode. <laughs> he basically yeah. had a tiny point spread between his points taken and his points against, but Pretty he much, actually yeah. managed to win. It was yep. sad. It was amazing. I feel that fantasy winning and losing shouldn't be about total points. It should be about your spread between points. Yeah. I think it's impressive to win with the most points <laughs> scored against you. It's like I had the hardest time of anybody, and I came out on top. That's right. Well done, I'm sir. the best. Thank you. Thank you, but uh, so far it's summer not looking not looking quite as good. Yeah, I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure about my draft. Yeah, I got my Bjergsen double lift core. I'm very confident with that. But beyond that, right, we'll see. We'll see. We shall see. I don't know. I'm gonna wreck you. I'll just hopefully beat Barry at least. That's all I care about. You know, I called my match against him a victory lap, so I have to kind of back it up now, don't I? <laughs> with your yeah. ne negative points already. That's right. Well. You know, the thing about negative points is that <laughs> when it comes down to it, I'm trying to repeat what I did last season, which is just do it in hard mode, right? So if I don't have negative points on my jungler on day one, if I don't start out that first day at, like, negative point one eight, then how can I get the epic win that I'm in store for this weekend? When Team Gravity <laughs> takes <laughs> out Dragon Knights and enemy esports. That's actually probably pretty likely. I know, so I could get a lot of points <laughs> from my top and my uh, my uh, flex, which is which is keen in the mid lane. That's right. TDK is using subs this week, so that it's really only uh, yeah. it's only enemy that you have to worry about. In theory, yeah. yeah. In theory, probably not in reality, but we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> so I'm feeling pretty good. So I'm still feeling pretty good about that. Not feeling too good about uh, getting into this game again, though. We're just stuck at ninety percent here. It's, it's we are. We've got an A on our loading on our loading screen, 90%, but um, it's not actually loading. I thought it'd be a good enough grade to let us actually into the game right now. We're very strict, though. We demand <laughs> only the best. We need an A plus performance. That's right. Yeah. So uh, we had some good ramen for lunch today, didn't we? We do. It was, yeah, it was a new ramen place. It was. I like. I like ramen. Yeah, I like the Japanese style. Most ramen in Korea is terrible compared to Japan. So. That's true. But this was really like the bad. really good, like, Japanese-style yeah. ramen, though. Like, you know, you know uh, we both live in the same neighborhood in Korea. Not same apartment or anything like that. That would be weird. But we live in the same neighborhood. So, you know, we see new restaurants come up, and usually it's, like, slightly above average. But this was, like, really good ramen, actually. Yeah. Quality. Quality, so, quality times with ramen. <laughs> if you ever... Uh, are curious about if there's good ramen in Seoul or not. There certainly is. There's maybe one good place. Two. Uh, there's, yeah, I can think of two, including the one we went to today <laughs> off the top of my head. But it exists. It exists. But the moral of the story is if you want good ramen, go to Japan instead. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's, I think that's the big takeaway we've got from this. Yeah, pretty much. So this could be one of our longest pauses ever. I'm really excited about this extremely long pause. I was coming into today really pumped up about Incredible Miracle versus Anarchy. <laughs> but I also was like, if there's a long pause in the middle of game two, that's just going to make my night. It will. I, I was really excited because be I have a cold and my, my throat is kind of dying. So, you know, mm. a long pause with an additional 20 minutes of talking was really what the doctor ordered. 
we don't need to yell though or anything unless we want to <laughs> i mean i guess we could just start yelling but uh i don't i want to keep it on the down low i want to sort of preserve my voice as much as i can you know Chobra's just laughing at us somewhere. That's what we know for sure. He's just watching this and laughing. I know you're out. Chobra, I see you out there. I know you're laughing at us right now. Stop it. What a jerk. He Chobra's is. such a jerk, isn't he? Yeah, we're glad he's leaving. That guy. No kidding. Good, good riddance to bad rubbish. That's how I feel. Goodbye, Chobra. We've got Papa Smithy coming now. He won't he's, laugh at us. He's Australian. He has that exotic accent. That's right. Chobra can just speak two languages fluently. <laughs> That's right. That's, that's why he has to go back to America, where everyone only knows one language. <laughs> that's, that's right. Well, yeah, that's true. Pretty well, much. Some people, yeah, some people know more, but, you know, the thing is, is that everyone studies multiple languages in school, but then you just don't really get a chance to use them. Yeah. You could. I guess. Yeah. Hey, come on. How many languages do you speak? One. Yeah, see? <laughs> see? Oh, Mr. Critical. <laughs> Look at this guy. <laughs> I, I was the one saying everybody spoke one language. I wasn't being critical yeah, but at all. You were, you were doing it in like a condescending way. Why? Well, that's how I do everything, Doa. <laughs> that's, that's true. Okay. <laughs> you got me there. All right. That is true. That's pretty much true. So what did, what language did you study in high school then? A French. A French? A French. Just French. Okay. You said a French, so it's kind of It was an a uh, confusing. French. Oh, okay. I was thinking. French. I studied Spanish for two and a half years, and then I studied German for one year because actually <laughs> – I was uh, I was one semester away from finishing Spanish. Thank you, thank you. I know I, I almost had three years. I appreciate it. It was a, it was a struggle. I studied really hard. I'm glad they appreciate that. Yeah, but the teacher in in my university was so bad. It was actually a Dutch woman teaching Spanish in my university, and she had a very strong accent too. So how are we supposed to understand that that that, that that's our matchups? Are we taking a break or something? I think we are going to take a oh. break while they resolve this. All right, we'll see you later, guys. <laughs> Have a good one. Oh, there we go. Hi. Hey. Welcome back to a completely average day of uh, League of Legends <laughs> champion Korea. I'm Doa. That's uh, Smarty. Yeah. We had a bit of a pause, a bit of a break. In fact, the break involved uh, a computer yeah, and a client that broke. Yeah. Our spectators were actually kicked out of the game. Yeah. So Bizarre. they are not able to respectate it. However, we are going to be executing some sort of workaround, perhaps based off of viewing from the player's perspective. So this could get hmm, very interesting now. I'm not exactly sure how they're going to cobble this together. It'll just give you an opportunity to extensively critique an individual player. Ah, that's really what you I wanted today. won't know where half of the other ones are. <laughs> yeah. Should be, should be interesting. Should be very interesting. Playing with Fog of War is... I great. think we're in for a fun time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, they, they keep, Ready. They keep trying to re-log in, but it does yeah. get stuck at 90% every single time. It's really bizarre. And, of course, we have redundant spectators here, too. Loading, loading. Oh, 86%. Nope. Oh, Ni oh. 91? No. Done. Yeah. Uh, we do have redundant spectators, but all of our spectators were ejected. Yeah. That's a really bizarre thing is that they were all kicked off at the same time, but who knows? I'm no League of Legends client expert, so I can't tell you what uh, Is, is what anyone, there. Doa? Is anyone? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? Either way, uh, if you want to kill some time, you can go to ogn.azubu.tv <laughs> and uh, vote for some super plays because, man, have there been some. Go and check them out. They've got a website that has a bunch of clips with uh, really good plays. You can vote for whoever I uh, think deserves the award. Yeah. Yeah. Exciting times. You have the power within you. <laughs> to vote. That's right. Let democracy win. That's right. Just allow it. Allow democracy to triumph. I guess that means I am as democracy if uh, anarchy is in this game. That's true. Yeah. Praise Helix. <laughs> yep. They're trying it again. They are not giving up. On this loading thing. It's not going to work. No, it's not. Still, still hasn't. Yeah. Actually, you might be interested to know that Tucson is using a gravity esports icon for his uh, 
his client here. He's a big St. Vicious fan. <laughs> I guess so, yeah. <laughs> Which is why he should probably switch it to Coast now, I guess. <laughs> is it, is it maybe he's, what happened? Maybe he's, he's friends with Keen. Maybe. Or Move, their new jungler. Oh, yeah, Move, right. Uh, Tucson. Yeah, he may have. He may know Move from China, actually, because mm. Move was on EVG's B team and Tucson was on OMG's B team. Oh, okay. So they may be LSPL buddies. Ah, cool. They might have so hung out. So maybe he's representing Move. Ah, I see. That is the convoluted story about how Tucson and Move might know each other. And now they're both in the same role. <laughs> what a wonderful story <laughs> this is. Well, I'm glad oh, we I'm got. Oh, I was talking about Lyra. Never mind. I'm being silly. Tucson wasn't in China. That's what I was wondering. Yeah, but yeah. I was just, I just have no, kind of. I was being. I'm, I'm getting kind of, loopy. I'm getting loopy. I've off kind of the learned to uh, accept that there's a lot of things that happen in the League of Legends scene <laughs> around the world that I just don't know about. Maybe I just don't hear about. Here's my new theory. Here's I was my, like, oh, is Tucson in China? Sure. Here's my new theory. Okay. Two, Lyra. Six degrees of I, move I, I separation. <laughs> move used to beat Lyra a lot in the LSPL. I don't even know. I don't know what the results of the LSPL world. Okay. I don't even know if Lyra moved ever played. So my theory is they played against each for. other a lot. Mm -hmm. And now Tucson is using the gravity icon to remind Lyra in the loading screen huh. of his defeats at the hand of move, thereby intimidating him. Could be. Could be. <laughs> it could be also that... Uh, Tucson is referencing St. Fish and is just very late to the party on the whole St. <laughs> Fish's smite memes. Like, it's like way old and done and dead, but Tucson's just find out, finding out about it. And he's like, that's really funny. What team's that guy on now? Gravity? Oh, he's not? Well, too bad. I'm going to use the icon anyway. There you go. The convoluted theories. Six of degrees of Tucson. <laughs> that's right. I wonder, how would you connect Tucson to Kevin Bacon? <laughs> I can't. I'm sorry. Hmm. We've got to be able to connect Tucson to somebody. <laughs> Somewhere, I don't know. <laughs> it's like we're trying to find him a date now or something. But no, it's, we're just trying to, you know, actually, we can connect Tucson to uh, former governor of Minnesota, Jesse Ventura. Because Great. I've met Tucson, and in high school I interviewed Jesse Ventura <laughs> during a media class. So there we go. Tucson, League of Legends pro gamer, Jesse Ventura, former professional wrestler, predator fighter, politician, <laughs> slightly crazy person. There you go. That's right. Yeah. Are you proud that the people of Minnesota? Yeah, totally. Who do you think we're going to like some like boring normal politician? No, man, professional wrestler. We were the first to elect a professional wrestler as governor, man. We were the trendsetters. So California? This is why I left America. <laughs> <laughs> All this has already happened, though. Were you, you're just wor what professional wrestler were you worried would get elected as a Colorado no, governor just, or I'm New just, York? I'm just ashamed. The Rock, perhaps? I'm just ashamed. Jake the Snake <laughs> Roberts back in the day, maybe? Yeah. No, I'm just ashamed. Okay. <laughs> we're, finding a, we're finding a lot about Monte Cristo's <laughs> feelings about his native land tonight. You, you just They're mostly shame. <laughs> wow. I still like America. The land of freedom and opportunity for everyone. And even though I'm far away, I still think Even though you found more opportunity in Korea <laughs> than America? <laughs> <laughs> amber waves of grain and uh, great. The beer is a lot better in America. That's true. That is true. We drink in moderation. Responsibly. It's responsibly. <laughs> Enjoy <laughs> responsibly as alcohol is normally enjoyed in South Korea. <laughs> <laughs> I can't keep a straight face when I say that. Uh, oh, well, I tried, you know. <laughs> yep. So when's the last time uh, When's the last time you watched an exciting television show? I don't know. I'm just trying to think of things. I don't have time to watch television shows anymore, though. I just have time to watch. You should Legend. watch Daredevil. I know you. Everybody keeps telling me this. It's, just, it's really it. good, man. Someday, it's really good. Doa, it will happen when I'm finished with The Witcher 3. So, mm. like 200 hours later. Yeah, if you play like an hour a year or something <laughs> like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, it's a really long game. Been yeah, enjoying that one. You know, that's the problem. Is that a lot of games I want to play are very long, like Pillars of Eternity, like Witcher 3. Dragon Age, all these things are like really long games, and I don't have time to play them all. That's so right. So I play like three to four hours of each, and then I move on to the next one. It's really bad. Let me tell you guys a story about being a gamer when you get old. You don't have yeah. time anymore. So actually, those $60 games that have 
hundreds of hours of, of, or, of content or 100 plus they hours. They were great in high school. They were great because you got such great value. Now, I just want the game to end. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's hard, too, because honestly, this is like the brutal truth about esports we're delivering here is that when you study a game all day and all that stuff, you cast a game, and then you, you love video games. It's part of why you got into it in the first place. When you go home, and then you're like, oh, I should play that game, but I'd really just rather not do something gaming related <laughs> for a couple hours. And so that contributes to it too as well, which is kind of sad. I could be, I could terrify my dog with my guitar. She's <laughs> terrified of that thing. I can't believe how afraid that dog is of the guitar. I mean, I'm afraid of you trying to play guitar too. Hey, I was pretty good back <laughs> in the day, man. <laughs> You set yourself up for that one. I was pretty. You've never heard me play the guitar. You don't know. He's not an authority. He's an authority on League of Legends, but he's not an authority on my guitar playing. So don't listen to Monte Cristo on that one. I prefer to seek the finer things in life. You know, I go for that top shelf quality. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what would you, like, what, okay, what other guitar player would you prefer to listen to? Or do you just mean a different instrument? You're like into I the mean, oboe or something, <laughs> the, the clarinet perhaps, <laughs> something a bit more cultured. Which other guitar player would I rather listen to <laughs> than you? I mean, like every there other are one. So that's, that's, many. I feel that. I feel that way too. I feel that way too. Yeah, I can agree. We were actually trolled into getting back onto this broadcast. I, feel, I because think because so. there was no actual resolution no game. to this problem. Rumors of a game breaking out on this video game broadcast have been greatly is exaggerated. But at least we know we could have a talk show if we wanted to. I mean, we're doing it right now. Yeah. Right. We just need some guests. We need a third That's microphone right. and guests. Riot, see, you're clearly missing out. Thank you for putting our talk show on your channel. This is a great boost for us when we eventually start it. People will already know the quality. That's right. They're trying. I mean, the thing is, is Riot has. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> appreciate it, please. All right. Thank you. We uh, Primetime League is a very popular show. Well, it's on anyway. And we could do a talk show as well, too. Yeah, like but that. not Prime, about League. Primetime <laughs> us. <laughs> Prime. <laughs> Primetime OGN desk. Doesn't need to be video game related. Oh my oh, gosh, wow. are we actually? No. No, we are. We're in the game. And Aurora's already dead. What do you know? Song Yoon fighting Apple. Okay, let's keep track of it. Both AD carries dead. It's a good start. I am okay, backing so away. Okay, so it that's... appeared that somehow I am We're back in. Wanted to wow. take a turret right or wanted to take a Baron right there and then traded AD carry for AD carry. So not sure what happened in the interim. Uh, when we left this game, it was 12 kills to 12 kills. Now it is 15 to 13. You're I right. don't know what the clock was at, so they played for a few minutes. Apparently so. Uh, and a dragon being taken by I am. This would be their third, it looks like. We're playing catch up just like you guys are. All right. Uh, oh, man, yeah, turn that chat off. All right, there we go. I don't want to see what the players say either. I just want to see their sick movements on the map. That's right. Okay, so. Three dragons over for Incredible Miracle right now. Gold advantage to Anarchy. Let's take stock of the situation. Two frozen hearts, so that's going to help against Roar, that kind of only damage output. Ooh, he's getting Black Cleaver onto nice. Callista. This is a really good build. Uh, he's going to be getting so many stacks with that in combination with the Hurricane and having some extra tankiness so he can stay in the mix longer and get... Oh, oh, Mickey. All right, I'm just gonna end that one there. Oh, oh, Mickey. Oh, oh, Mickey. So fine. And no so Black Cleaver yet. Yeah, Apple right. decided to grab the Randuins. Randuins instead. Yeah. Hmm. So not really looking to stick in lane as much as he could otherwise against CB Max. All right, well, Anarchy's still slightly ahead in gold too, and uh, turrets. But those dragons may really come in handy for IM a little bit later here. Yeah, that's probably how this game is going to play out, is just around the dragon right now. Anarchy can't really allow any more to go over. Mm. And they have the multiple damage sources, so the tanking is also not really there yet, even though the locket already completed Yeah, for Tucson. You know, that Santa Graga skin throws out like Christmas presents, but they really just look like grenades. <laughs> Giant grenades. They do, yeah. Maybe it's more like the Santa robot from Futurama. I haven't seen that one. There is actually a lot of episodes. I thought you didn't have time to watch TV. <laughs> it's in my past, Doa. <laughs> I see. 
Just like everything you reference, if it was 10 years ago or more. It's like everything before this moment right now. <laughs> Let's get deep. That was in the past. Well, the game has kind of stabilized after a little bit of a, a little bit of craziness. I'm glad we get back into it. it makes me happy. Well, oh, 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 look at this. Blue buff being taken, and so I am deciding to go for a Baron. There's a ward there, though. This it's could be still, dangerous. There's a Callista that yeah. can burst this down. CB Max already there. Yeah, a Snowflower uh, already there, actually, as well. Roar, Roar gets over knocked the out. His spears uh -oh. went away. That's right. I am maybe in a little bit of trouble. They turn, though, onto Snowflower, onto CB Max. Where is Roar? He needs to get back here. Apple with the... Oh, he gets taken out after using the ult. Roar comes back in, gets knocked up. That's what was a great Sejuani ultimate from Anarchy. That basically set up the kill, the double kill for Mickey, and now Anarchy turning onto this Baron. What a play, though, by Snowflower to knock Roar out of the Baron pit. Yeah, this is going to be so slow, but they can't go back in because the potential for Mickey to burst someone down yeah. is too great, and there's no more TP available. Apple is dead, and his TP's down anyway, so a Baron going to go over to Anarchy. Oh, boy. I am tries to deal with it, but... Snowflower knocking Callista out of the pit, reset all the Ren stacks. Yeah. It was a dangerous Baron, Callista or not. It was risky. Well, they didn't turn either. They had a 2v5, or a 5v2 rather, yeah. for IM with just CV Max and Snowflower there, and they didn't take that advantage to turn. They got greedy and wanted to burst it, and instead even up the game for Anarchy in terms of that those kills and then give the Baron over. Very bizarre. So, like I mentioned, uh, like what, half an hour ago? So, back and forth game. Continues but. to be back and forth. The question is, can Anarchy actually push this Baron advantage? I am, didn't do a whole lot with that earlier. So we take a look at this again. Snowflower, I mean, that was so clutch because that yeah. Baron was so close to being taken with all of the Ren stacks that were already down. CV Max then gets an ult into the back line. Roar continues to try and kill him, but he doesn't have a whole lot of completed armor penetration yet, and then he gets just annihilated in the front, tries to pop oh. the QSS. <laughs> Let's hide in a brush. It's one of those times, isn't they, it, Noah? They know Hachani's the coach for anarchy. <laughs> They're trying to take advantage of it. Well, they've got some pink wards down, but there's not going to be any real opportunities right here. Oh, oh back on the Snowflower, and they grab him with the Death Sentence. Not a lot of damage there, though. They forced the TP, though. Yeah. And are able to go back to lane without using it, so that's a lot of pressure off the top side. Yep. Ooh, Mickey's that was very close. Mickey's to do a lot of damage, though. Yes, he is. Looks like they're going to have to give this turret up. Apple not really able to push up that top lane as well. Can they get an inhibitor off of this? Apple did delay his recall to reverse that wave. Now they're going to try and actually push into the mid lane, continue to snowball off of their gold lead. But still, these three dragons from IM are quite worrisome. They have to get this next dragon. Looks like they should be able to secure it with that Baron buff, but it's going to come at the cost of probably getting another turret. Whoa, uh, explosive cast. You doesn't hit Snowflower. anybody. Yeah. And, and now. it was spell shielded onto Song. You, and so that was actually a bit of a missed ability there from Tucson because they didn't actually get the Alistair back into the team. Yeah, you'd think that would make it very easy for Anarchy to take it's this dragon now. It's possible that he hit them and Snowflower actually had a hit his ult at exactly the right time, but it's, yeah. it, was, uh, it was a little hard to tell right there. But regardless, they got rid of, oh. Oh boy, Roar might be in trouble here. Yep, might be, more like is dead. Eight, five, and three now for Mickey. Even through the magic resist on the QSS, still yeah. taken out. But no attempt at the dragon yet. Solo split pushing. Now finally they start the dragon, but CB Max has to ult out the turret. Got some decent damage done. Well, he's been good at distracting as well, too. So Anarchy is going to get their first dragon of the game, and that big 6% is going to be very big at this stage where everyone has so many items ready. Yeah, and also just the denial for the fourth sack is absolutely huge. Yeah. So there it goes, over to Anarchy. And yeah, not bad as well, nice little power boost for Team Anarchy. 6K gold ahead now. So we could 
pretty easily go to game three now. Roar sold his phage, so he's not going to be doing that. Just got a last uh, whisper yeah. instead after that last fight. The more immediate, especially against two frozen hearts, that percent penetration probably going to do a lot more work, especially if he has to burn through a Hecarim that's charging him down. Right. Definitely going to be doing a little bit more initial damage. Apple could be very helpful, though, with a Black Cleaver of his own, adding more armor penetration to help Roar out, considering that he is, again, really the only damage threat on th this composition. Well, he's a ways away from anything like that. So we'll see if he goes for it, maybe. Whoa, nice attempt by Ignar, but nobody in that brush. Yeah, they need to be so careful. Man, Mikey can do a lot of damage. Mikey? Mickey. <laughs> Mikey, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, look at this build from Roar, too. He's going to be getting a Blade of the Ruined King as his last item, it would appear. So just having a lot more sustain and the ability to burn through some of these tanks that Anarchy is using. Now they're going to try and oh. dive. Uh, Tucson gets pushed back. They grab Lyra, actually knocked back with the explosive cast, but he's so tanky right now, not able to do a lot of damage. Mickey tries to get a kill onto Tucson. The turret getting very, very low, goes down anyway for Anarchy. In a different spot, Snowflower low. Mickey takes a lot of damage, actually. Gets the chains in, and wow, somehow I am just barely holding on here. Yeah, and just some amazing hooks, actually, by by uh, Ignor in there to set yeah. that one up. He kept people taking a lot of turret damage and kept hooking him in. Yeah. Snowflower has to recall, so no I am able dying, to defend though. their tier Tucson two. No one dying, had to flash out of that engage. Yeah. So 55 seconds until Baron is up. How badly do Incredible Miracle want to fight this one? Mickey going back. Only just the start of magic resistance. Oh. Ooh, that was close. You're not going to be able to kill that Gragas. He's got percent damage reduction and also uh, has that lock-in. So he's one of you, probably the hardest target to kill right now. Nar has a lot of HP, but not a lot of MR. And now everyone grouping up at this Baron that's going to come up in 20 seconds. Still no Callista there. CV Max darting across the map. His TP will be a, up a little bit after Baron spawns. Mm. And just gonna split push in the meantime. However, the Gnar will be able to handle that well enough. Yeah. I think you said earlier when you said Apple and Roar are kind of the last chance for IM. They can still certainly win a team fight. It just uh -oh. needs to be pretty perfect and it needs to not have Roar get caught. Well, they're so afraid of the LeBlanc burst right now, and they have to get control. Baron is spawned. Well, they should definitely be afraid of, Leblanc, of the LeBlanc burst. Yeah, so they have to get some wards in there right now. Oh, and there it is, Roar nearly taken out. Luckily, he can heal up pretty quickly. He can heal up so fast, and that's the scary thing, right? And as long as Frozen is with him, he should have enough shields to survive that, but he's yeah. been separated from Frozen just a little bit. That's the thing is that they need to just make sure they stay together as a team. Oh, and here we go. Apple might be coming in. Yeah, perhaps Snowflower gets caught. Ignar actually flays him away. And Ignar just ends up getting poked, and I am not getting to do a whole lot here. Mickey trying to come from behind. Maybe can take out Thresh. Oh, boy. All right, here comes Lyra as well. A little bit of an awkward situation for I am right now. But they're just going to go up the mid lane. Wow, they're going to fight this. This is like last ditch effort here. The box goes down. Apple, almost Meganar. It could be good. Yep, about to become Meganar. Very low health, though. Mickey comes in to try to get some damage, though. There's a Meganar. Meanwhile, CV Max over the top. Roar manages to get out of the ultimate, though. Snowflower and CV Max trying to chase him down. Lyra's there as well. Roar is on his own, and CV Max is trying to get the kill. The kiting for Callista is happening, but everybody chasing him down now. There's a double kill as Mickey comes in and takes him out. Tucson in trouble as well. Back over the wall, and he's going to lead Lyra on a merry chase. To death. To death. And that's actually probably going to be the end of this game as the so. rest of Anarchy are right in the mid lane pushing Ooh. down this tower. Yeah. Now low health, but the death timer should be just long enough. 
Unless Tucson can make a miracle play here. Looks like they'll just have to settle for the inhibitor, though. Oh, wow. Going back, maybe going for this Baron. But yeah. there's a lot of home guard boots coming out. And also teleport up for Apple in 10 seconds. Well, Ignar can't go in 1v4 here. He needs to be very, very careful. And I think they should be able to get this Baron, yeah. But can they get the Dragon after it is the next question, because that's going to put IM on the cusp of having five. Yeah. So they can rush to the Dragon right now before Anarchy is able to start. They know Mickey is at half health in the top lane, clearing out this minion wave, so they should absolutely just rush Dragon right I now. I think that's exactly what they're doing, yep. People on the way right now. Frozen and Apple going to that Dragon. And so this will be a fourth Dragon then for IM. They should be able to get it. They're being very they careful see warning. They see Sivir as well in the bottom lane, so yeah. now this is a great opportunity for them to get this dragon that they can really, really utilize later in this game if they can hold out from this Baron. Oh, that's huge. They just need to win this fight, too. Song Yun, they're going to turn on to him. Song Yun in a little bit of trouble here. He's going to go down. Roar has a great position on this team fight, loading a lot of damage in with the AD carry down. It may be good, but look at this. Kills coming in for Anarchy anyway. Roar gets taken out, and it looks like Anarchy's going to be able to end it right here. Another double kill for Mickey. They had to go for that dragon, but Anarchy taking the fight, and Song Yun kind of giving his life, I guess, for the win. <laughs> Yeah, now they're just going to charge down the middle, go ahead and end this game, and send us to a game three tonight. I guess so. I guess so. Only Tucson left to try to stop this from happening. I don't think that's going to go too well for him. Dodging the skill shots, but the Nexus can't dodge anything. And that is it. Well, he gets the kill on the Mickey at the end, but we are going to go to game number three. As the Nexus goes down, GG. Crazy night. It is a crazy night indeed. Lots of kills in that game, a lot back and forth. Many throws were had. But in the end, this composition built around Callista just didn't quite work. Too easy to be locked down by some of the burst yeah. uh, coming through. So, wacky game. But in the end, Anarchy actually takes it despite being down early. Very wacky game. And we will see if IM is able to sort of regroup after that. And that was a game where IM really had everything going for them, but just they sort did. of They did. They had some... the advantage in top lane, too, with that NAR. Yeah, um, some bad decisions. And Anarchy, too. Mickey coming back. Remember, Mickey was 0-3-0 and zero earlier in this game, and he actually still managed to come back, have an effect, find the picks yeah. in this game, and pull out a win for the team in the end. Wow, well... We'll be back, guys, with game number three. Don't go anywhere.